Hi, this is Christy with Guidepost to Wellness. Welcome back for all you return viewers and welcome to anybody that's new to the channel. This channel talks about anything and everything that has to do with wellness. And vitamin D is what I want to talk about today because vitamin D has been in the news a lot and it is a significant factor for overall wellness. And it's what's very interesting is 40 to 80 percent of Americans are actually deficient in vitamin D. And especially during certain times of the year, that, me that number may actually go up. And the reasons for that are really uh, less sun exposure for a variety of reasons. We spend a lot of time working indoors, sitting indoors. Uh, you see my video, I'll put a link down below about the benefits of getting outside. Um, so maybe you've, you've seen that video and you're starting to get outside more. But it's fall, and so the angle of the sun is changing. So even with that, I'll talk more below, but that um, getting outside may not be enough, uh, depending on where you live. The use of sunscreen, which is absolutely imperative if you're photosensitive with an autoimmune disorder like lupus. Thankfully, I'm not anymore, but there was a period of time where I was extremely sensitive to the sun um, and could not be out in the sun with or without any type of sunscreen so that can be a factor if you have darker skin and more melanin in your skin uh, it can be harder for you to actually create vitamin d from sun exposure so you could be at risk for lower amounts if you live in a city where you may not have the opportunity uh, due to the shadows and the buildings different things or if you live um, north of about the center of the united states that can also uh, dramatically impact the amount of sun and the, the UV rays that you're getting. So some of the possible symptoms of low vitamin D, if you have any of these, then I really encourage you to get with your primary care physician to get some testing done for 25-hydroxy vitamin D. So if you have weakness, um, if you're feeling chronically fatigued, if you're suffering from any type of depression or anxiety, um, vitamin D can be an important thing to test for that as well. Trouble sleeping, obviously if you have broken a bone um, or if you have any type of osteopenia or osteoporosis, uh, that's probably something that's going to be tested. If you have some type of autoimmune disorder or a weakened autoimmune system, or if you have any type of overall systemic inflammation or swelling, then these would be times to be working with your doctor to get tested. So for your test results, and the doctor in the lab will give you that information, but in general, if your numbers are above 50, then that's a good sign that your, your body's getting uh, enough of the vitamin D. If you're between 30 or 50, then you'll want to work with your primary care. They may uh, recommend that you get some supplementation, or you may be able to incorporate some increased sun and some of the foods that I'm going to talk about in a minute. If you're less than 30, um, then your doctor more than likely is going to want to take some type of significant acts, um, action, which could be um, a prescription form of vitamin D3. So vitamin D, uh, research has shown lately, it is tremendously important for overall health. I'm not sure there's really any part of overall well-being that vitamin D is not involved in some way. Uh, it With your bone health, it works with calcium and other vitamins and nutrients. So if you are getting enough of calcium but you don't have the vitamin D, you're not going to get the strong bones and teeth. It supports your immune system. It may help with inflammatory responses. It is protective against some infections and with many viruses, which can be very important during this time um, with the virus that has been going around, going into the fall season with the potential for more flu viruses and cold viruses. Um, it's, it, it helps support the white blood count. It decreases a virus's abilities to reproduce, all of those good things for a healthy immune system. It promotes cardiovascular health. This is probably not something that most people think about with vitamin D, but it helps with blood pressure, it helps with cholesterol levels, and inflammation. And all of that's important because it's actually inflammation that, along with cholesterol, can lead to the formation of plaque. So all of those are very, very important. I didn't realize this or didn't remember it, which in either case, is how important vitamin D is with the regulation of insulin and blood sugar. So if you have any type of blood sugar issues or challenges, then getting your vitamin D tested can help with that. 
It helps with neurochemical production. Like I mentioned during the, some of the symptoms of depression or anxiety, it could be important to get your vitamin D levels checked for that as well. And if 40 to 80 plus percent of America's population is deficient, then there's a chance you could be and a simple vitamin could help with that. It's a major factor in hormone development. Um, so any time in your life, hormones are important, but perhaps if you are trying to get pregnant, um, if you are um, just recently going through menopause, perimenopause, that can be important as well. And studies are showing now that it can have a major impact on tumor growth, cell differentiation, and apoptosis, which is cell programmed cell death, which are critical for the formations of certain types of cancers. So another great reason to look into getting more vitamin D. Now the best way, whenever possible, barring uh, you know your complexion, whether you have an autoimmune disease, where you live in the world, the best way is always going to be naturally through the skin and sunlight. Um, that's the way our bodies were designed to get the, the best vitamin D. Um, so 90 to 95 percent of people actually get the majority of the vitamin D that they do get through casual sun exposure. So even during the, the, the summer months, uh, as little as 10 minutes a day with no sunblock, but I'm talking you need to have like, you know, most of your arms exposed uh, so that you can get about 10 minutes a day, you can get up to 10,000 units, which is an, an amazing amount. The cholesterol in your skin actually converts melanin into a usable form of vitamin D. So that's where um, it's important to make sure that you don't wash your skin right away after getting sun exposure. Now, there's, um, there's studies that are being done and there's some mixed schools of thoughts, but the vast majority of doctors will tell you, one, that chlorine is going to strip your skin's natural oil barrier anyway. Uh, and other doctors will mention that it's not a good idea to, to take a shower and, and especially lather up and I'm going to talk about that in another video, really not necessary to lather your skin up. There's, believe it or not, an important um, microbiome on your skin that's very protective too, but that's a topic for another video. So you don't want to wash your skin right away, and you definitely don't want to lather up. If you're in a pool, that's probably going to counteract uh, most of the sun that you're getting, so try to get a little bit of exposure out, out, outside of that. So if you're fair to medium complexion like I am, uh, 10 to 15 minutes without sunblock can be really fantastic for getting the amount of vitamin D that you need on a daily basis. Darker skin could take 40 to 60 minutes. And then if you are from about the mid-states north, you may need closer to an hour uh, without sunblock. And that can be hard and that could be challenging because we want to balance the healthy benefits of getting the vitamin D but not the risk of cancers. And then the thing that happens is, and why I'm talking about it now, as the sun starts to wane and change and move in the sky, is that with winter, you're going to need double those amounts. And so how many of us are spending an hour outside getting sun uh, during the winter months? Probably not. So that's why some of us may need to turn to foods, which are a good source. And it could be as something as simple as a high quality uh, cod liver oil, a teaspoon of that daily. Some of the older folks probably used to remember taking that when they were a kid. Uh, uh, fatty fish like mackerel, halibut, salmon, whitefish, swordfish, trout, uh, sardines, tuna. Those are all tremendous sources of vitamin D in, in an animal form. Uh, pastured eggs are a great form of vitamin D, beef liver. Um, raw dairy, if you can get it, if it's legal in your state or if you are um, if you know of a way that you can get um, not pasteurized dairy legally, that would be a great form and if you can tolerate the dairy. Otherwise, fortified milk and dairy products or milk alternatives are a great way to get the extra vitamin D. And believe it or not, a pure plant form of vitamin D is uh, maitake and port or portobello mushrooms that are grown with UV light exposure. So those are just some of the sources and ways that you can get it through food. Uh, if you're going to look for a supplement um, on your own that your doctor doesn't recommend, then look for one that is definitely D3. And ideally, if you can find one that's fermented, 
um, look for that. I'm going to do another video looking a little bit more into that. I have a form that I've been buying recently, um, but I haven't checked to see if it's fermented with L. vulgaricus or not. So I'm going to take a look at my own vitamin D and see how I'm doing. I know that my vitamin D levels are generally very good uh, whenever I get them tested regularly. So I think the form that I'm using must be working, but I'm going to take a look at it. Um, I don't want to recommend anything to anybody that is um, not the highest of quality. Um, that's one of the things on this channel is I'll never recommend something that I don't take myself or do myself. And most people can supplement with about 5,000. I use a day with little risk of over supplementation. But again, I'm not a doctor. I'm not going to prescribe any certain amounts of any um, supplements for you. Please make sure that you go and you get tested so that you know where you are because yes, you can get too much vitamin D and we do not want to have any type of toxicity. And so you want to make sure that you're getting your levels tested regularly. You want to get them tested in the winter time and you want to get them tested a couple times a year. It's a fairly inexpensive type of test and your GP should be able to help you out with that. So I'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, on how you're doing with your vitamin D. Have you been getting it tested lately? Have you seen any improvements in any type of the symptoms that I, mes um, that I mentioned earlier when you supplement better with vitamin T? I D. I'd love to hear from you on that. Leave your comments down below. Thanks and be well.